starts right now. The 4th of July holiday is in full swing, and so are two DPS initiatives designed to keep you safe on Texas roads. Tonight, team's John Paul Barajas has what you need to know before heading out the door to celebrate Independence Day. You've probably already seen them, but DPS is putting more boots on the ground this weekend. Part of Operation Crash Awareness Reduction Effort, otherwise known as CARE, and Operation Holiday. Being a holiday weekend, we expect more travelers on the highway. That's why we're uh, putting special emphasis on having more troopers out working this weekend. Operation Holiday will only be running Saturday and Sunday and is focused on traffic violations. During last year's campaign, troopers handed out nearly 40,000 citations and warnings. That's in addition to 308 DWIs and over 500 arrests. Operation CARE, on the other hand, started on Friday and runs until Monday the 5th. This one specifically targeting the state's move over or slow down law. That's when a, uh, a motorist, when they're approaching a stopped emergency vehicle with their flashing lights on, we ask that you slow down 20 miles per hour below the speed limit or move over to the next lane if it's safe to do so. Sergeant Orlando Moreno adds that's not just for when you see first responders with their lights on, but also tow trucks or anyone on the shoulder with their hazards on. From January 1st of this year to June 18th, DPS recorded just over 7,000 of these types of violations. We understand it's a holiday weekend. People want to celebrate. We're asking you to celebrate responsibly and, uh, you know, plan ahead before you uh, begin celebrating. That way you can get home safely. The holiday weekend already off to a scary start for some. Just after 10 p.m. Friday, two people in this car were taken to the hospital in serious condition after a head-on crash on the southeast side. The driver of the vehicle that hit them is being evaluated for DWI. And just some tips before hitting the road. Obviously, the big one, don't drink and drive. Make sure to plan ahead. Two, of eliminate all distractions while driving. And three, if you can steer it, clear it, meaning if you've been in a minor accident and can move your car off the roadway, please do so. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, John Paul. And if you are still looking for a place to take in 4th of July fireworks tomorrow, KSAT has you covered. From Bernie to Leon Valley, we've got a full list of all shows happening in and around San Antonio. Just head to KSAT.com and find the story on our homepage. New on the night beat, San Antonio police arrested a man they say is responsible for a fire that destroyed an apartment building in the medical center, displacing eight families. 35-year-old Ryan James Simpson was booked on charges of arson and stalking. According to his arrest affidavit, the fire was started on the patio of one of the units. A man living there told police he believed Simpson may be responsible because he was angry at him for stealing his guns. Simpson was also accused of texting the man saying he had, quote, 24 hours before things of his magically start exploding randomly, end quote. It was later on, on June 28th, that the flames were seen shooting through the roof at the apartment building. No injuries were reported, but the American Red Cross did have to help families that were affected. Taking a look at other of today's top stories, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office working to identify a body found on the far east side of the county. The person was discovered around 1 p.m. off Highway 87 near Rakowitz Road. Sheriff's deputies believe the death is related to a car crash. Hours earlier, deputies were called to that same area for reports of a reckless driver. Deputies say the victim is most likely a pedestrian who was hit and killed. That driver has not been found. An overnight shooting sends two to the hospital, one of them in critical condition. Police called to Broadway Street this morning, not far from the airport and Loop 410. When they arrived, they only found shell casings and just a mile around the corner on CG Street. They found more shell casings. Later, police say two men with gunshot wounds were dropped off at Northeast Baptist Hospital by some friends. One man shot in the torso, the other in the leg. So far, no arrests have been made and no word on any suspects. San Antonio police also looking for a suspect in connection with a stabbing at a sports bar near UTSA overnight. It happened just after 2 a.m. outside the Sandbox Bar off UTSA Boulevard. Police say a large group of people got into a fight and guns were drawn, though no shots were fired. We're told one man stabbed another man in the chest and then took off. The man who was stabbed was taken to the hospital, and we are working to find out his condition. The U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services is on the path to welcoming 9,400 new citizens in 170 naturalization ceremonies by July 7th. 17 of those new citizens sworn in today all of them under the age of 14 and representing 17 different countries. That I team's Jaffney Gray now with how special this opportunity is just in time for Independence Day. I was really, really happy and, and then I couldn't believe what I was experiencing. I was like, what? 
Seven-year-old Emma Q is one of 17 children under the age of 14 who became an American citizen Saturday. The emotional ceremony put on by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services took place at the Duseum Children's Museum. I'm just so proud that today we finally get it, um, you know, finalized and uh, formalized. And uh, now she can proudly see that I'm a... Chinese American. Four year old Maxwell Mosley was born in Canada. He beat his dad, who was in the process of citizenship, which means he now has dual citizenship. My mother is an immigrant. Uh, she came from Cuba back in the 60s. So to have my son now go through this process was something that was really special and just, just shows how great America is. America is freedom, America is uh, uh, progress, it's success. Keynote speaker for the ceremony, Shokare Nakpodia, knows all too well about this journey. He became a citizen in 2010 and says it is something he's always wanted to do. We bring all our talents from all over the world and create this unique, wonderful, incredible nation. Their tiny hands raised high as they were sworn in will be a special memory never to be forgotten. I think creating events like this make them appreciate in the future the introduction into America. The United States Citizenship and Immigration Services has naturalized approximately 625,000 people in fiscal year 2020. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. We welcome them all to the American family. Outside with live cam. Uh, if you were outside this evening, especially in and around San Antonio, much of Bear County, it felt pretty good outside this evening because we had some rain around this afternoon. We were left with slightly lower temperatures, some outflow boundaries bouncing around. That'll help kick in a nice breeze. And those outflow boundaries from time to time can help to fire off some new showers and thunderstorms. I think we'll see a very similar setup tomorrow for the 4th of July. Speaking of 4th of July, we got a lot of fireworks in the studio. Didn't tell our boss about that one. Bam. Um, <laughs> uh, dusk tomorrow, right around fireworks time. We're looking at temperatures low to mid 80s and a low chance of rain. Again, very similar to today. I expect our highest rain chances in the afternoon wrapping up in the evening. We'll talk more about your 4th of July forecast in a string of good rain chances coming up next week in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. Tim. Thank you, Katie. Search and rescue efforts in Surfside, Florida were paused today to prepare for the demolition of the Champlain Towers South. The need to bring down the unstable structure growing more urgent as Elsa and its tropical force winds approach southern Florida. Here's ABC's Christine Sloan with the details. Preparations are underway in Surfside, Florida to demolish what's left of Champlain Towers South. Officials temporarily pausing the search and rescue efforts Saturday afternoon as they get ready. We're continuing to move forward with due diligence and with setting a specific timeline. There is threat to the standing building that is posed to the first responders. And with Elsa churning its way towards Florida, those concerns are growing. The governor declaring a state of emergency. At the end of the day, that building is too unsafe. This will protect our search and rescue teams uh, because we don't know when it could fall over. Officials say a controlled demolition with explosive charges should create a minimal footprint, allowing them to quickly resume the search and rescue operation and even expand to areas they haven't been able to safely access. Families of those who lived in the building were told of the demolition plan Saturday morning. I think it brings me to tears, literally. Like, I, I can't imagine. I, I mean, I know people, people who are still missing, they can't find their family. Miami Beach, along with other cities in the surrounding area, are now conducting a thorough review of all condo high-rise buildings, hoping to prevent another tragedy. Just a few miles away, residents of Crestview Towers in North Miami Beach were told they must evacuate after an engineering report deemed the building structurally and electrically unsafe almost six months ago. City officials saying they just learned about that this week. Nobody knew. I didn't know that the building was deemed unsafe since January. And I went July, what, July 2nd. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Still ahead on the night beat, rising gas prices don't seem to be stopping Americans from hitting the road this 4th of July weekend as pandemic era travel hits an all time high. That story and more when the night beat continues.
Well, the number of people traveling through airports hit a pandemic era record on Friday. Yeah, more than 2.1 million people were screened by TSA as people are definitely on the move for the 4th of July holiday weekend. CNN correspondent Polo Sandoval reports. By now, most Americans who plan to travel this holiday weekend may have already braved the 4th of July frenzy on the roads. I think it's going to be pretty busy and congested. Yeah, that's why I, I didn't want to wait and leave any, any later than today. Or at some of the nation's airports, many of which seem to be bursting at the seams on Friday. AAA expecting nearly 48 million people will have traveled either by road or by air by the time this 4th of July weekend comes to a close. Most of them, some 43 million, opted to drive to and from their destinations, according to Andrew Gross from AAA. The biggest difference will probably be the number of people traveling by car, and there are a number of factors figuring into that. Uh, international travel is still down. Cruising has not picked back up yet. And people may generally feel a little more comfortable traveling by car. You can decide when you're going to leave, where you're going to stop, and maybe not everybody in the family is vaccinated yet. Gross expects rising fuel prices likely aren't keeping families from a long overdue post-pandemic getaway. It won't come cheap, though, with the cost of a gallon of gas averaging $3.12 nationally, the highest in seven years. $11, I'm, a, I'm at 2.5 gallons. Experts say not only is summer demand to blame, but a shortage of fuel truck drivers that has left some service stations empty. Flying this weekend? You want to adhere to your air crew's instructions or face paying some hefty fines. The Federal Aviation Administration has received over 3,000 reports of unruly passengers this year alone. A majority of incidents related to non-compliance of the federal mandate requiring mask wearing on flights. Hoping to address people who don't listen to crew instructions, the agency rolled out a video message for those who should know better from those who do. They'll go to jail and they keep doing that stuff. That is so unsafe. They should know better if they're like adults. <laughs> they should they know better. Should know better. Adults, but they don't. <laughs> Everyone's lost their minds, it seems. Behave yeah. out there, will you? <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> yes, behave. My mother yes. and father in law are in town this weekend. Oh. Be nice on the roads, too, because there's been some bad driving out there as well. I yeah. mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It, I feel like that's a little standard sometimes, but <laughs> I don't want to be like David Sears things. and say, use your blinker, but like, use your blinker, yeah. you know, <laughs> like be courteous. David, David. He got a shout out <laughs> that David, um, hope you had a great day today. Some of us got a little bit of rain this afternoon. If you didn't get any rain, you'll have another shot tomorrow. Of course, that will come maybe at a cost for some outdoor events. You may have to move them inside for a brief period of time tomorrow afternoon. And we're going to get into that forecast here shortly. 76 the morning low, 95 this afternoon. Believe it or not, that's just one degree above average for this time of year and not quite a quarter inch of rain at the airport. So today's heavy rainfall in some spots did see one to two inches. And in some cases, radar estimates a little bit more than two inches of rain today. Uh, that heavy beneficial rainfall was very, very hit or miss. We did have some nice pockets of one to two inches of rain in far western and northwestern Bear County, again, closer to the airport. Uh, up near Stone Oak, more like a quarter of an inch just off to the west of Canyon Lake, around a half inch north of the lake around 0.4 inches there. But again, a couple of nice bullseyes here because that rain, any rain that falls could be quite heavy and you could get a quick one to two inches of rain if you find yourself under one of these downpours again tomorrow. So we are looking at some spotty rainfall totals and I don't want you to, uh, you know, memorize exactly where these rainfall totals of one to two, maybe even a little bit more than two inches of rain are. I just show you this to kind of illustrate that again tomorrow, these good rainfall totals are going to be very, very spotty hit or miss and not widespread across the area. So that means not everyone is going to see a thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon, but we will have another scattering of those thunder showers tomorrow again, mainly during the afternoon hours after lunchtime and through early evening. Uh, not expecting a lot of severe weather, really no severe weather, but some heavy rain will be possible and also some flashes of lightning. So remember, 
when thunder roars, go indoors, get everybody out of the pool and indoors. And, and that's why I say you may have to bring your outdoor activities inside for a little bit if uh, you're lucky enough to see one of those thunder showers tomorrow afternoon. 78 now at the airport, 80 in Pleasanton. Spots that didn't get rain this afternoon like Catula, Carrizo Springs, Del Rio. You are still fairly warm at this hour. As far as rainfall goes currently, we've got a couple of showers trying to hang on through a portion of Edwards and Real counties. Lakey, we'll see if this little shower makes it to you in the Highway 83 corridor, but this little complex of shower activity is gradually fizzling out as it drops down to the south here across the metro things are pretty quiet so taking you into tomorrow morning it's going to be a quiet start to the day i can't roll out a stray shower but again tomorrow just like today we'll start to see those thunder showers bubble up after lunchtime and through the afternoon hours through late afternoon early evening also like today those showers will really start to fizzle out and drop off the board quickly after sunset so right around fireworks time tomorrow i do think we will be in good shape an isolated shower can't be ruled out but most fireworks shows are going to be just fine tomorrow evening. Heading into Monday, another day of some afternoon rain chances, and I expect a slightly higher coverage of some showers and storms on Monday afternoon. And this takes, this takes us into a pretty wet period heading into next week. We've got some rain making energy. These orange colors here that are going to get cut off from the rest of the jet stream across the US. Look at this bright red color here. That's a lot of good lift and rain making energy. That's going to hang out with us for several days next week, and that's going to keep our rain chances pretty elevated all the way through the middle part of next week, Wednesday into Thursday. Because of that, look at these high temperatures. Uh, Courtney, I thought you and I put this forecast together uh, because the mama to be, we need to get these temperatures down a little bit. I appreciate this more than you know. It's, you know, this is like the greatest <laughs> summer ever. <laughs> Just keep it rolling. It's, it's, I don't believe I'm seeing 80s. I, I think we're going to pay for it at some point, so we'll enjoy it while we can. <laughs> All right, Larry, have the Cowboys figured out how to build a better, stronger, faster mm -hmm. Zeke? Well, Zeke is trying to figure out how to build a better, stronger, faster Ezekiel Elliott. And according to his personal trainer, Zeke is doing just that after coming off his worst NFL season. And when it comes to the Texans running backs, they are hurting, according to a former NFL running back. Coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will leave for Oxnard, California, and training camp Tuesday, July 20th. Jerry Jones will hold his opening press conference the next day, and the Cowboys will hold their first practice Thursday, July 22nd. And from the sound of it, we will see a new and improved Ezekiel Elliott. His personal trainer, Josh Hicks, told The Athletic that Zeke is quicker, way more elusive, and more fluent. Hicks has posted videos of Elliott going through workouts, which have become popular on social media during the past few months. Zeke's production declined last season, raising questions about whether he's lost a step. Hicks said he doesn't think Zeke has ever worked like this in an offseason. Elliott did look fresh and more explosive during OTAs and minicamp. When it comes to the Houston Texans running backs, they're in a world of hurt, according to former NFL running back Maurice Jones-Drew, who said the Texans have the 30th 30th best starting running back in Mark Ingram. Houston has seven backs on the roster, including three pro bowlers in Philip Lindsay, David Johnson, and Ingram. Jones believes that Ingram will win the starting job come week one. And Texas A&M head football coach Jimbo Fisher feels Vikings rookie quarterback Kellen Mon has the perfect situation in Minnesota to learn from starting QB Kirk Cousins. Jimbo told the Pioneer Press that being behind Kirk, who is a great veteran, who's been productive, is a perfect setup for Mond. Fisher feels Minnesota is one of the top organizations in the league and the head coach Mike Zimmer is a great football coach, great football mind. Fisher also said that it will benefit Mond at the Vikings run a similar offensive system to what Mond had with the Aggies. Members of the USA basketball men's and national team are Las Vegas bound for the start of training camp Tuesday. Camp runs from July 6th through the 18th. That also means the select team guys like Spurs forward Kelvin Johnson will head to Sin City knowing their job is to train with the national squad as they get ready for the Summer Olympics this month. Johnson is a rising star in the NBA, averaged 12.6 points, six boards and 1.8 assists in his second season with the Spurs, establishing himself as an everyday starter for San Antonio. Johnson was so excited he made the select team, he called DeMar DeRozan, who made the select team in 2012 with the Raptors. I can't even explain it. You know, I, I felt like I was so excited. Uh, and when, when I got the call, or like when they told me, I called DeMar, and I, <laughs> I was like, you know, the first call I made, I'm like, what, what do you think? And he's like, bro, this is an amazing opportunity for you. You know what I'm saying? And I, 
I mean, just to hear, because he's been in those shoes. So just to hear him say that, I, I was like, man, let's go. Like, I can't wait, you know. Of the six USA select teams, 15 select team players have gone on to represent the U.S. in Olympic play with the national team. And DeMar is one of those players winning gold in 2016. Keldon says one day he hopes to make the national squad and play in the Olympics. In the WNBA, the Seattle Storm Wave rookie guard Kiana Williams on Monday. They drafted her in the second round, 18th overall in this year's WNBA draft. Williams appeared in eight games for the Storm, and she scored the first points of her pro career against the Connecticut Sun only hours after graduating from Stanford via a three-pointer and one, so it was a four-point play. Storm head coach Noel Quinn, who was promoted seven games into the season after Dan Hughes retired, said waving Kiana was tough. It's tough because it's it was a business decision more than anything that she did or did not do. Kiana is a great individual. She's a great human being. What she provided for us was amazing. Day in, day out, didn't play a lot of minutes, but her energy never changed. Her um, attentive, attentiveness to detail, um, she's a great teammate. All of those things never changed, never wavered. She was a, a light for us in what she did for us, and it just is a tough business decision. And she understood, and she was great in, in, in her response. Coach Quinn said she hopes they can bring Kiana back at some point. And later in sports, Reagan's Jasmine Montgomery adds a sweet award to her already impressive resume. Guys, we will look forward to that. Larry, thank you so much. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The FBI now investigating an armed standoff between Massachusetts State Police and a group of armed men along the stretch of Interstate 95 in Boston, in the Boston suburbs of Wakefield early this morning. Yeah, 11 men were taken into custody after several hours and they are expected to face charges. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has her story. An hours long standoff between Massachusetts State Police and a group of heavily armed men came to an end on Saturday with 11 suspects in custody. The situation unfolded around 2 a.m. when police noticed two cars pulled over on I-95 with hazard lights on after they had apparently run out of fuel. I think we'll know at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the investigation, I should say, um, was this something that was staged to draw the attention of the state police or were they in fact just traveling? Some of the suspects were clad in military style gear and armed with long guns and pistols. They were asked for drivers and relevant firearms licenses, but indicated they had neither. Two suspects were arrested. The rest of the group, which calls itself Moorish American Arms, fled into a wooded area, which was then surrounded by police. The standoff shut down portions of I-95 for much of the morning. The road eventually reopened and shelter-in-place orders for the Boston suburbs of Wakefield and Reading were lifted. People should feel confident right now that we have 11 people in custody. We have taken custody of a number of firearms and we are continuing the investigation. The suspects surrendered after police tactical teams used armored vehicles to tighten the perimeter around them. A number of firearms have been seized. The two vehicles that were at the scene are being towed from the scene. In a YouTube post, some members of the group said, we're not anti-government, we're not anti-police, we're not sovereign citizens. The suspects are expected to appear in court on Tuesday. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. So making headlines around America today, two seniors are dead after a light rail train struck and killed them last night in Seattle. The Seattle Fire Department recovering them from underneath that train. A 76-year-old woman was declared dead at the scene, while a 66-year-old man died at the hospital a short time later. Passengers on that train describing an abrupt stop and a huge emergency response. Everyone got very upset on the train. There was a lot of crying and being very upset and it was traumatic. It is really awful um, and it was awful for the people who witnessed it on the outside but being on the train was yeah it was really scary. I'm sort of shaking still. Police say those two victims were crossing the intersection when they had a don't walk sign. Heading to California now where firefighters believe they've gained some ground on the so-called lava fire in the northern part of the state. Caused by a lightning strike, the lava fire has burned more than 23,000 acres and as of tonight is only 26% contained. But firefighters say the rate of speed at which it has grown has slowed, allowing them to gain more ground on that containment. Thousands have been evacuated from their homes since the fire started, with only a few recently allowed back home. Nearly 30 new alleged abuse victims have filed a lawsuit against The Ohio State University over alleged abuse and cover-up of sexual misconduct by a former school physician. 
The lawsuit claims the school was aware of and covered up for a former staff doctor Richard Strauss's sexual abuse for decades. It identifies six of the alleged 29 male victims by name and refers to the remaining 23 victims as John Doe's. That lawsuit claims the men were sexually assaulted, molested and or harassed by Strauss while he was employed by the school from 1978 to 1998. Defendants are demanding accountability and compensation from the university. That lawsuit also accuses the university of knowing about the sexual abuse within the physician's first year of working there. The university has reached settlement agreements with 185 people in 17 other lawsuits, totaling now more than $46 million. A report from the university in 2019 said Strauss sexually abused at least 177 male students. Strauss died by suicide in 2005. The first cruise to set sail in the U.S. in 15 months has returned after a seven-day trip. The Celebrity Edge docked in Port Everglades in Fort Lauderdale today. Passengers traveled to Mexico and the Bahamas, and the ship sailed at less than 40% capacity to allow for social distancing. 13 unvaccinated children were on board. They were tested for COVID-19 before arrival and all tested negative. The cruise line says the rest of the passengers and crew were fully vaccinated. Time and again, July proves to be one of the best times to buy stuff thanks to the 4th of July and summer sales. Some deals you may want to check out right after this break. Well, 4th of July sales are popping right now, but just because something's on sale doesn't mean that it's a good deal. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on which top rated products are discounted right now, making July the best time to buy. July is the time for firecracker sales. Some actually are sizzlers. With July 4th coming up this month, you can expect to see a lot of sales across a wide variety of categories from large appliances to tech devices and a lot more in between. Consumer Reports tracks prices of its top tested products all year. So here are their hot deals. Headphones. These Sennheiser noise canceling headphones are $180 at Amazon. CR says they rate right up there with the pricey models for sound quality. Vacation may be more relaxing with a DIY home security camera. The Arlo Essential Wireless Security Camera is now $100 at Best Buy. Since retailers don't want to store grills after summer, look for discounts to begin. Right now, this Weber Genesis 2 model is $780, a $50 savings at Target, Home Depot, and Ace Hardware. Had enough of our sticky weather? CR says July is best to find sales on dehumidifiers. The Frigidaire 22 pint is down to $165 at Walmart. And if it's time to spring for a new mattress. Mattresses are almost always on sale. But that said, we do tend to see steeper discounts during major holidays. We don't really recommend purchasing one full price because you can almost always snag one on sale. The CR fave, the Casper Sleep Element Mattress, is $535 at Amazon. You will start seeing the back to school sales already, but keep in mind there will be deeper discounts on school supplies, laptops, and backpacks in late August. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. You know what comes after the back to school stuff? Christmas and Halloween. No, they come out at the Halloween. Same time. <laughs> I was going to start with the Halloween, Tim, but I like. The Christmas like... is already out. If you go to Michael's and those other places, it's I out. No, it's it not. Is, yes. yes, it is. God, I can't be bah humbug twice in this show, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> there was some. I bought a little skeleton cup. At, uh, at home the other day. So well, they, I saw you stuff. also had your pumpkin mask out recently, too, for your rooftop weather. <laughs> yeah. so. That just stays in my drawer all year. <laughs> Obviously. It's easily never, accessible. Never far away. <laughs> easily accessible at any time. All right. The current holiday at hand, 4th of July. I want to show you what tomorrow looks like across the state of Texas. This is 10 a.m. tomorrow. We'll start to see some showers and storms pop up, likely in central Texas, but even here in our area, afternoon storms are in the forecast again tomorrow for the 4th of July. We'll talk more about that forecast and get you a check of what's going on in the tropics coming up shortly. Take a look at this. Tropical storm Elsa battered parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti with heavy rains and high winds today. Elsa had been a Category 1 hurricane Friday and early this morning, but has...
Hawks hosting the Bucks in Game 6 of the Eastern Conference Finals tonight. Trey Young returned for Atlanta after missing the last two games with a bone bruise in his right foot. The Hawks face an elimination. First quarter, Drew Holiday goes three ball. Milwaukee leads seven to nothing. Later on, Bobby Portis plays alley oop with Brooke Lopez, and the Bucks are rolling early, 15 to four. They led the entire first quarter in 28-24 after one. Second frame, Pat Connaughton drives and runs into Danilo Gallinari, knocking him over. Pat dishes to Jeff Teague for three, and it's 36-27 Bucks. Atlanta wanted a foul on Connaughton, but didn't get it. Now back to Holiday. Watch this. He's going to drive. He will spin and lay it off the window. It's 45-39 Bucks. They led 47-43 at halftime. Early third quarter after the Hawks got within two, Chris Middleton cranked out his own 13-0 run to give the Bucks some breathing room, 60-45. to Middleton scored 23 points in the third, and Milwaukee led 91-72, entering the fourth quarter. Late in the game now, Drew Holiday drives and lobs the ball to Brooke Lopez for some seven-footer alley-oop action. Bucks up 10 with a buck 29 to go. Milwaukee wins game six, 118 to 107 to win the series in six games, advancing to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1974. LA Clippers guard Patrick Beverly was suspended one game for shoving the Suns' Chris Paul during the Clippers' season-ending loss on Wednesday night in game six. He was ejected from the game. Beverly will serve as one game suspension without pay during the first game next season Season that he's eligible to play. Now, speaking of Chris Paul, the NBA released the mic'd up version of when CP3 and Suns head coach Monty Williams embraced at the end of game six. It's a cool moment for Paul, who's heading to the NBA Finals for the first time in his 16 year career. Oh, I'm trying to finals. calm down, coach. You don't have to coach. calm down. You don't have to coach. calm down. Don't have to calm down. Great emotion from Paul. While the Bucks and Hawks are wrapping up their series, Paul said the extra days off before the finals is helping his right hand. After game six against the Clippers, Paul revealed he's been playing with partially torn ligaments in his right hand. Now the finals will start Tuesday night in Phoenix between the Suns and Bucks, live right here on KSAT 12. San Antonio FC return home looking to extend their unbeaten home streak to 19 straight matches against Austin Bold FC, but the home side fell behind early. Atez Dioff gets a clean look at the top of the box and scores in the second minute to give Austin a 1-0 lead. San Antonio can't find the equalizer, and they fall by that same score, 1-0. In the majors, Astros going for their third straight win in Cleveland. Sorry, Gerber. Houston up 1-0. Top of the fourth, Carlos Correa sends one deep to left field and gone. The first of two solo home runs in the inning. Astros take a 3-0 lead, and they hang on to win it 3-2. Congratulations to Jasmine Montgomery from Reagan High School, who was named the 2020-21 Gatorade Texas Girls Track and Field Player of the Year. She's the first Gatorade Texas Girls Track and Player of the Year to be chosen from Reagan High School. The 5'5 senior ran the fastest 100-meter dash in state history and also broke the tape in the 200 meter dash at the class 6a state meet this past season leading the rattlers to second place as a team montgomery clocked a win aided 100 time of 11.09 seconds she won gold medals at the uil state championship in both the 100 meter and 200 meter dash the oregon commit is now a finalist for national girls track and field athlete of the year which will be announced later this month she didn't even look tired after that yeah, it makes it look easy <laughs> Thanks for not finishing there on the uh, Cleveland loss. <laughs> you didn't want to comment on that? Yeah. A happy reunion for a dog and its owner after they were separated for more than seven years. We're going to tell you something good next. Finally tonight, something good. All right, this dog and his owner are together again after being separated for seven years and more than a thousand miles. The Yorkshire Terrier mix named Sergeant Pepper, which I'm obsessed with that name, name. <laughs> disappeared in Florida when he was six years old. Animal Control says someone who wasn't his owner claimed him from a found posting. The dog went on to spend five years with a Michigan family that didn't know about his microchip. Sergeant Pepper ended up with Animal Control there and the department used the chip to contact that original owner. And now I'm back home. I <laughs> love it. Oh my gosh, what a happy ending. <laughs> Tomorrow and Monday as well, our rain chances will be highest in the afternoon hours. But as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, rainfall could be around uh, all through the day into the overnight hours as well. So some yards have a good opportunity here heading into next week to get a few inches of rain. We'll keep you posted, guys. Thank you, Katie. Thank, thank you for watching. Yes, we will be back here tomorrow. Be sure to catch GMSA starting tomorrow at 6. Have a great night.